You're listening to the Full Court Press with your host, Drew Duncan. Don't you dare touch that dial. Everybody, welcome back to the Full Court Press. I am your host, Drew Duncan. We're live on 99.5 ESPN Radio. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it's all at Drew Duncan 83 It's all at 995 ESPN as well. You can call in at 620-343-6143. That's 620-343-6143. I'm going to give it to you one more time. That's 620 343 Six one four three. We are Emporia's home for sports. Turn, 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 turn. Throwback Thursday. One of my favorite all-time instrumental beats, man. This is from when I think I was, I don't know, 19, 20, somewhere in that neighborhood. I was a young pup, man. Young pup. Speaking of young pups. The draft is going down tonight. 620-343-6143. I've asked a lot of questions. Who would you take? Who do you want on your team? Who is the all-time draft bust? Who's an underrated draft pick that has gone unnoticed? Are you tired of hearing about the draft and just want to see some action? 620-343-6143. Four three, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Drew Duncan eighty three or nine ninety five ESPN. Give you the number one more time six two zero three four three six one four three. Throwback Thursday, the nineteen eighty three NFL draft is unequivocally the greatest draft of all time. Yeah, drama with John Elway. Yeah, the, I mean, and, and you know, here's the thing. I mean, let's just get this out of the way really quick. The drama with John Elway is deep, deep with John Elway and Dan Marino. Did you know that there was a point in time when the 49ers considered trading Joe Montana so that way they could get John Elway in this draft? One of the players that they ended up taking in this draft, by the way, was Roger Craig, who ended up having a pretty good career in the NFL. Huge draft. But John Elway had been telling Baltimore for a long time he didn't want to go there. And the whole idea was, you know, they'll just say, oh, you know, I'm a West Coast kid. I don't like playing in the cold, da-da-da-da-da. Of course, he ended up playing in the cold for his entire career in Denver. But here's the deal. The Baltimore Colts decided to go ahead and draft him anyways. Blew up in his face. Everybody started telling him that, you know, oh, you're a West Coast kid. You don't want to play in the cold, blah, 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 blah. So finally he got up and said, you know what? I've been telling you for three months that I don't want to play in Baltimore. I'm not trying to be a jerk about it or anything. But we had this agreement behind closed doors, and you guys pulled this anyways, which is exactly why John Elway didn't want to go there. He did not trust the organization. They met with him, him and his and his late father, and they just decided that it wasn't the place for Elway to go. And it should have been obvious to anybody unknowing that. And to this day, the Colts, they, they still talk about how things could have changed for them if they could have been able to draft John Elway. But it wasn't just Elway and Marino and Jim Kelly that came out of that class. Or even Tony Eason, who was pretty much a bust. Todd Blackledge, pretty much a bust. You know, Easton did go to a Super Bowl, but he wasn't tough. Ken O'Brien was in there. But how about guys like Daryl Green? Do you know that they were drafted in the 1983 draft? Kurt Warner used to be a running back for the Seattle Seahawks. I don't mean Kurt Warner, the quarterback. I mean, Kurt Warner, the running back, who was a really great player. Roger Craig, like I said, came out of that draft. I mean, it was just stacked. 
I mean, one of the greatest drafts of all time. Greg Townsend, remember him when he was with the Raiders? He came out of that draft. How about Daryl Talley? Remember the, the Buffalo Bills and all the, you know, the time that it took for them to get to that point and they went to those four Super Bowls? Daryl Talley was a part of that. He was drafted in 1983. Oh, it gets deeper. It gets way deeper. Jim Jeff Coat, remember that name? For the Dallas Cowboys defensive end? He was in that draft. Matter of fact, he was a first round draft pick. Vernon Maxwell, remember him? He was drafted out of 1983. I mean, you want to talk about a ridiculous draft. I mean, this draft is what made the NFL draft what it is today. Everybody's looking for that stacked class that we saw in 1983, and it's never going to happen again. I really don't think it will. And I think a big part of it has to do with because you think back then, you know, there were games on TV, but, you know, the recruiting was a little bit different, I think. I think it was more down home, and guys didn't rely on a lot of hype. You know, they didn't rely on a lot of being, you know, hometown players. They went after the guys that they needed and thought would be the best players who legitimately suited their team. I think that's one of the big differences that we see now. It's just a lot of guys that I think are taking beef simply because of hype. I mean, I really do believe that. Just think of it. Seven Hall of Fame players in one draft. I mean, that's unheard of. There are guys, you know, like Greg Townsend. Finished his career with over 100 sacks. Tim Joyner, linebacker, he was in that draft class. I mean, that's how good it was. That guys were going late. Like Roger Craig, I don't think he went to the second or third round. Just crazy to me to think that one class could be as good as the 1983 class. Greg Townsend, who I just mentioned, he didn't even go until the fifth round. He was the 110th pick in the draft. Think about that for a minute. That's insane to think about. 100 sacks in his career doesn't go until way later. You know, to me, the 1983 draft blows out of the water the idea or notion that in order to get somebody, you've got to have a first-round draft pick. I think there's just way too much made about it. You know, because obviously later on, we're going to be talking about draft bust. Going in the first round doesn't necessarily mean that you are a great NFL player. Really, more than anything, it only means one of two things. You're either very good at promoting yourself and there's a lot of hype around you, And at the collegiate level, you were probably the best at your position. Probably. But again, it's all predicated upon team need. So we see guys fall a lot of times like a Dan Marino because of team need or because, you know, we look at this Heisman Trophy winner and go, oh, he's a little bit better. Or, you know, this guy doesn't need a quarterback. The 49ers didn't need a quarterback. They had Joe Montana. And like I said, they thought about trading John Elway, but they decided against it. Just an insane draft class. I don't think that we'll ever see that again. And not only do I do I think that we will never see that again, um, but I really truly believe that it's as good as it's ever going to get. I mean, think about this. You had Craig James coming out of that draft as well out of SMU with Eric Dickerson, and he w- and Craig James was the 187th pick, and he had a fairly stout career in the NFL. I, I just, you know, my thing about it is, When you start thinking about this particular draft and what it meant to the NFL, it was, and if I remember correctly, it was the first televised NFL draft, if I remember right. So when you start thinking, at least it was in the early stages of it, I know that much for sure. 
But when you start thinking about everything that it meant in terms of how things were done, I mean, John Elway demanded to be traded. Who did that? Fine, I'll go play baseball. People weren't doing stuff like that back then. They were just glad to get drafted. Even if they you know, didn't really want to be somewhere, it was be humble, go play for that team, and do the best that you can. Dude, I told you, I don't trust you. You told me that you're not going to move your team. I think you are going to move your team. And that should have been evident to everybody the moment that they drafted Elway that they were fronting and they were going to move the team. And, of course, they ended up moving out of Baltimore and going to Indianapolis. John Elway felt like they had no direction, and he stood up for himself. It was guys like Elway and Marino and some others that, you know, they picketed and they fought for a lot of the uh, player advantages that they have now to this day. I mean, really, when you think about that, that is what this class really meant. These guys were all about something completely different. They were tired of being taken advantage of. They were tired of being railroaded. They were tired of guys just doing whatever they wanted to. It, no, you're not going to do this anymore. We're going to start taking care of ourselves. We're making informed decisions, and if we don't want to be somewhere, we are not going to be somewhere. And what's amazing to me now is you have guys in back-to-back years that have said, I want to go to Cleveland and be the guy to help turn that thing around. Well, so far, Cleveland's missed one of them, and that was Deshaun Watson. Will they make the same mistake by by deciding to pass on Lamar Jackson? It's going to be a big deal. Look, here's the bottom line to this. The 1983 draft class was deep, and it was loaded with talent absolutely insane amount of talent and when you think about all the success that these guys had the one common denominator was this they never ever quit no matter what was going on think about it Dan Marino played for the same team for his whole career John Elway played for the same team for his entire career. And as we all now or know now, he's still a part of that organization by working in the office. A lot of these guys played for, I think, Greg Townsend, same team his whole career. Daryl Green, same team his entire career, or at least for the majority of it with, with Washington. I mean, when you start looking at it in that regard, these guys were seen kind of as rebels and John Elway was, you know, a jerk and all this stuff. And yet he never left the Denver Broncos. Jim Jeff Coat, majority of his career, Dallas Cowboy. Bruce Matthews, majority of his career, Houston Oilers. Played two decades of football, same franchise. Think about that because that, you know, he was there when they transitioned to the Tennessee Titans. Think about all that for a minute. Billy Ray Smith, another phenomenal linebacker that people don't even really talk about anymore. Just insane. Get Gil Bird at, at cornerback. The records that he set there with the, the Chargers, come on. I mean, they just, it was a phenomenal draft. It's the best that it's ever been. And this year, I'm, I'm really getting tired of every single year. We hear the possibility that this could be the next 1983 draft. No, it's not. The game style is so different now. It's it's difficult to key in because the fact of the matter is a lot of these guys really are just college quarterbacks. Part of that is is the NFL has never really seen the benefit in the option. You got to be able to throw the ball, drop back, and throw it. Well, We are living in a different day and age. And I don't care about dropping back and throwing the football. I care about winning games. I've said for a long time that Denver needs to completely revise their offensive philosophy. It's old hat. It doesn't work anymore. You've got to modernize the way you play the game. This is the Full Court Press. I am your host, Drew Duncan. We're live on 99.5 ESPN Radio Emporia is home for sports. 
Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is all at Drew Duncan 83. Additionally, you can call in at 620-343-6143. You can also find ESPN at 995 ESPN across the board on social media. It is Throwback Thursday. We just threw it back to the 1983 NFL Draft. Coming up next, we're going to talk about all-time NFL Draft busts. Who's your all-time NFL draft bust? Again, don't don't call me and say Tim Tebow. Please don't do that. I, I just, you know, let the guy go be a baseball player, man. Seriously. His time as a football player is probably done. 620-343-6143. 620-343-6143. We'll be back right after this. Don't you dare touch that dial.